booktube this is friday reads i'm jen and i talk about audiobooks and i am myself again i feel like got my laptop back from when i had left it at the tsa checkpoint in the raleigh durham airport in north carolina and it ended up being a really wonderful way that that happened um so um, things are back to normal again, and I can edit video like I always do, and so I feel much better. It's kind of like when your car dies, you know, and you can't get anywhere, and you're like, my car's in the shop. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Let's move on to the books that I read last week. Let me tell you about them. Starting with Cheater by Rachel Van Dyken. This is book one in her Curious Liaisons uh, series, which I don't think it has more than two books in it thus far. Narrated by Lucy Rivers and Alexander Sendezi. Okay, the narration was wonderful. I love, loved, loved Alexander Sendezi, except for a couple of things. But I kind of wonder where he's been. I mean, I read a lot of audiobooks in the course of a year, and how is it that I've missed this guy? I don't know. I guess I haven't read the books that he's narrated, but he is really good. So I was very impressed with that. Um, my only caveats with that are that the voices he gave to the female characters were a little bit cartoonish, just a little bit too much. And I get that you have to do that uh, both on a Broadway stage or a live stage play or on audio because you only have your voice to communicate. You don't have your body language to do that. And so I get it that, you know, a lot of times you have to push it a little far, but I don't know some of the voices he gave these characters were just a little bit cartoonish and so I didn't like that but I'm telling you what he more than made up for it with all the rest of the narration of the character that he did so loved that Lucy Rivers was really good too she has a lower um, natural tone to her voice and I don't know I don't know I kind of expected that that character should have had a higher voice but why <laughs> why um, so she was wonderful too. So I really did enjoy the narration. I thought it was really good. Okay. I picked this up because I wanted to laugh and, uh, I just needed something that would be light and fun. And this was it. I knew with Rachel Van Dyken, you cannot go wrong if you want a contemporary romantic comedy that's going to make you laugh your head off. And this did. The only thing is that Rachel Van Dyken tends to take a situation and like take it off on a tangent. And sometimes, I don't know, it's, I don't think it's appropriate or I, I don't see why she did that. Yeah, really, that's more of it than anything. This is a situation, it's kind of a hate to love thing. And then these two people have to start pretending because there's family drama that happens. And so it takes a tangent and goes off to an OBGYN office visit. Like, uh, like I don't know how they did it. It was like uh, one night they're talking about it, and the next day they are going to meet for lunch, and they go. And it's like, wait a minute, don't you have to call for an appointment? <laughs> wait, and, you know, all those things. And it just, you know, it just pushed it a little far for me. So I don't know. It just, it was like, why did you have to do that? This was so funny and so good, but it did end up being a really fun book. So anyway, I gave it three stars and then I went to Breakaway by Katherine Gale. This is book one in her Portland Storm series because I was in the mood for some sports romance after that. And this is hockey. This is narrated by Suzanne Lynn Lorraine, who was horrible. <laughs> Okay, let me just come right out and say it. Like, how do you feel about that, Jen? It was awful. Okay, I prefer, and I have gotten used to, narrators who bring a book to life. And they do it by giving characters different voices, different personalities. They convey um, a lot of emotion and a lot of personality into the characters that they voice. And so it doesn't matter if they're, they're telling one point of view, if they're voicing one point of view, all the peripheral characters, the additional ones that they do, all have their own voices. So this was her reading the book, and I don't like that. 
I don't like that at all. It just, oh gosh. There were, it was told from two points of view and she was the only narrator. So right there, bad move on the part of the publisher. I know, bad move. Spend the money to get the two narrators, a male and a female narrator. If you have a male and a female point of view that the story is being told from. So, I mean, seriously, ugh. And she just was a, not overly monotone, but not at all expressive and emotional. And what, like, you know, I, it was flat. It was just so flat. So that made the story just kind of creep along at a snail's pace. So, um, and then you add to that the story. The story is about a woman who is about 28, I think. And she was a star hockey player from a hockey family. Her brother is in the NHL. Her brother's best friend is in the NHL. And she, they all grew up together. And when she was in college, after a, ga a game one night, um, there were some people from the opposing team, some guys who assaulted her. Like, not guy, guys. Horrible, horrible situation. So this book addresses that whole situation. And uh, she goes to her brother's best friend to help her recover from that. So he doesn't want to do it at first, but then he agrees. And so she pretends to be his girlfriend. And so we go from there. Um, this book really babied her along. Like, I get why in real life that would happen. And I think it was important to show that. Um, but you know, every time you turned around, she was having some kind of panic attack or having to hide or not being able to deal with a situation. Little by little, she made progress, but oh my gosh, the speed of this romance was like glacial. <laughs> it was horrible. It just took forever. And then you've got this narration droning on. And I just thought, ugh. So I got about maybe 70% of the way in and I just skipped to the end because I couldn't take it anymore. I just thought, no. So probably a good story. Uh, I don't know. If you were reading in, in like print, it might be a whole lot better. You would have probably a completely different opinion of it. And I gave it two stars because even though the Goodreads uh, rating scale says one star should be I didn't like it and I didn't like it. But I think that it's an important enough book, if you pick it up, it addresses this idea of recovering from an assault. And I think that was, there's something to be said for that. So I gave it two stars. Yeah. Let's move on. Okay. Then I picked up this, The Darwin Elevator. This is by Jason M. Howe. And um, I got this last year as an Advent gift from my friend Karen. And it is adult sci-fi, and it is set in the future, in a post-apocalyptic future where aliens have come. And uh, it's narrated on audio by Simon Vance. And it is book one in the Dire Earth cycle. And this is okay. Simon Vance was amazing. I mean, he's doing all these accents and just really bringing this book to life. It was, it was so good. So I really enjoyed that, but I don't know. It just didn't do it for me. I don't know if it's just the timing or what, but this just wasn't something that interested me. Like the main character just didn't pull me in. That's, that's it. That the book just didn't pull me in. So, and then I picked up Christmas in Silver Bell Falls by Samantha Chase. Um, this is narrated by Marietta De Prima and I got this on Hoopla. Because I just, you know, with this whole Christmas thing, I'm not really in the Christmas spirit at all. I needed some Christmas spirit. So I thought, okay, Christmas books. I don't want to go overboard and like, you know, overdo it, like over sugar up <laughs> like I did a couple of years ago for Christmas. I don't want to have nothing but Christmas, but I just needed something. So I picked up Christmas in Silver Bells. This is by Samantha Chase, narrated by Marietta De Prima. I just told you that, didn't I? It's book one in the Silver Bell series, and this is a sweet little story about a woman who hates Christmas for very good reasons, and she is left 
a house by her grandmother. So the very first night she meets the guy who lives in the tiny house on the property and he's the town sheriff and it's their romance. And it's just a sweet story of the way that she uh, starts to view Christmas differently and kind of comes around. This uh, handles the whole uh, steaminess aspect like Kristen Higgins does, where they close the door on the bedroom. I loved that. I love that. I, you don't find that very often, uh, but in this case, it was really refreshing. So I really liked it. It was the perfect thing for what I needed right then, so I gave it four stars. Oh, I forgot to tell you, Marietta De Prima, she was really good. She strikes me as um, kind of a Callie Dalton sort of a narrator in that um, she has that kind of a style. I can't really explain it better than that. Yeah, really, really good narration. Okay, then I picked up Married for Christmas. This is by Noelle Adams. It's book one in the Willow Park series, um, narrated by Jane Kramer. Jane Kramer was okay. I didn't love her. She didn't bowl me over or anything like that. She was sufficient for the book and that was fine. One of the things I did not like about this book was the um, temperament of the main character. And I think that has a lot to do with the way Jane Kramer voiced her. And so, yeah, on the narration, I'm like, mm, not great. This is the story of two people who get married out of convenience. And this is such an interesting story to me because he is a widower and yet he's pretty young, but his wife dies suddenly in a car accident after a couple of years of marriage. And then it's been a couple of years and he's best friends with this main character. And she is a, like a web designer kind of thing. She is an introvert. She doesn't get out much. And um, there's a church that's interested in him as a pastor because he's a pastor. And um, they don't want to, they're, they're dragging their feet on hiring him because he's not married. And it's in their hometown. It's a Presbyterian church. And so she wants to go back to her hometown and so does he. So she proposes that they just get married. It's not going to be a marriage of love, but they both want children, they both want a family, they're good friends, and they think it'll work. And so while he's reluctant at first, he says, okay. So of course, it's the story of them falling in love. Um, but she's just kind of snarky. I mean, and not even that. I mean, she's not funny. She's just ill-tempered. I mean, she'll say things because she feels so deeply inside and she's trying to cover for that. And so I, uh, I got tired of that. And this book is about his being a pastor in this church and what all goes along with that. But this is not a Christian book. This isn't Christian romance or fiction. I mean, there's a lot of steamy stuff going on in this book that I just, I mean, they get started and I just kind of blow through it. You know, it's like, 15 seconds at a time. Are they done yet? Yeah, okay. I couldn't believe it. Um, and yet I could believe it. I was just really surprised and, you know, I found it refreshing that this portrays a pastor and his wife in a very real marriage, in a very real situation, and um, yet in a very secular way. I liked that so much because it was just a little, you know, peek through the window of what it's like. So. Anyway, I gave that one two stars because it was okay. It was not great. Jane Kramer did not do this story any favors, and I didn't like that main character. I just, ugh, I don't know. It turned out well in the end, but I just didn't love it. Okay, and then I just finished P.S. I Hate You, which is by Winter Renshaw, and it's narrated by Victoria May and Wally Schrass. I had never heard these narrators before, but they were so good. I was really surprised. Well, this I didn't think was all that special, but as it went along, it was just so good. I really liked the main, the characters. Um, I thought that these two narrators really did a great job with bringing their personalities to life. And um, 
So this is about a waitress and a guy who comes into the diner where she works and he is in the army and he's on leave. He's a complete jerk to her. And then she hits his car. And so um, she says, let me make it up to you. And so she's a very gregarious person. She's very positive. And he's just really no nonsense. And he's like, yeah, don't, don't pull that stuff with me. You know, I, I don't like this kind of bubbly girl. She's driving me crazy. But they end up just uh, deciding to be friends and it's their romance, yeah. And it just, it takes a few turns and, um, you know, I figured out pretty easily what was going on. Um, there's a lot of her jumping to conclusions and yet you, you understand why she's doing it and yet you're still shaking your head and going, wait a minute, if you'd stop and think for a second. <laughs> But I loved it. I really did. I, I got to the end and I thought this was really a good story. And that's unusual for me because I don't read military romance. I don't like that. But it was good. It was good. So I gave it four stars and that's available through Audible Romance. Okay, right now I am listening to uh, Christmas in Silver Falls uh, book Two, which is on point and it's about a woman who who teaches ballet and a guy who is like a computer programmer and he's he's he inherits his niece like there isn't anybody else in the family who can raise her and her mom dies his sister so um, that's pretty good so far and again I like this narrator uh, because I don't know she's just good and um, so I'm listening to that and I'm also reading uh, a Cowboy Christmas Miracle by Carolyn Brown. This is on my nightstand and I'm not very far into it. Um, maybe, I don't know, chapter three, I think, maybe. And it's about feuding families and a guy who makes a bet and he ends up having to romance the a girl from the other family. And it's a cowboy romance and so it's kind of cute so far. I like the main character a lot. Let me know what you're reading and what you're up to this weekend. And that's it for now for me. Have a good weekend and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.